All right, folks, we got another episode of Swapology here working on our twin turbo all wheel drive frontier pickup truck. And today is a little less exciting of a day, but it's more plumbing. We are working on the brake system. So this truck had factory ABS, like every vehicle from this era, it was federally mandated, but we're deleting the ABS on this build. And on these vehicles, the proportioning valve that determines the front to rear brake distribution, the brake force is actually built into the ABS unit. So we're essentially replacing the ABS unit with an adjustable proportioning valve from Willwood, and we're gonna plumb up all new brake hard lines for the truck front to back. So the goal today is to make a bracket to hold that proportioning valve into the truck, uh, plumb up the brake lines from the master cylinder to the proportioning valve, and then from the proportioning valve to uh, each corner of the vehicle. Um, then we can measure up for some custom flexible stainless braided lines to go from those hard lines to the actual calipers. So today we want to get the hard lines plumbed, get that proportioning valve in, and if we're lucky, get the clutch master cylinder mounted as well. This was a factory automatic truck. We already put the clutch pedal in, but we need to put in a tilt-in master cylinder because the Nissan master cylinder is too small of a diameter to flow enough fluid to move a GM slave cylinder. So we have to put an upsized master cylinder in to work with the available pedal throw to get enough fluid to that slave cylinder in order to actuate the clutch on this TR6060 transmission. So that's today's goal. Thanks so much for tuning in and let's get to work.
we had a great day in the shop today working on our project Frontier. Uh, we've met most of today's goals, which is always a good day to me. Um, we got most of the brake system plumbed. So as we said in the beginning, we wanted to install a Willwood proportioning valve uh, to take place of the ABS actuator in this truck, and we did that. I fabbed up a little bracket um, that basically bolts on where the master cylinder bolts to the booster to hold the proportioning valve. And we bent up some brake lines to connect the master cylinder to the proportioning valve. And then we made brake lines that connect from the proportioning valve and run to the corners of the vehicle. So the way the proportioning valve works is it has a single front input and a single rear input from the master cylinder, which is exactly what this factory master cylinder has for an output. Conveniently, the rear port on the master cylinder is for the front brakes. The front port is for the rear brakes. A little counterintuitive, I know, but that's the way it's set up. And the way the proportioning valve laid out was the rear port was also for the front brakes. We were able to just make some nice simple lines to run over from one side of the master cylinder up over to the top of the proportioning valve. And then we bent up some lines to run from the bottom of the proportioning valve. Um, the bottom of the valve has two front ports and one rear port. So the two front ports, we ran one to each side of the front. Um, instead of running across the top of the engine bay like the factory brake lines do, we actually ran down and under across one of the cross members under the truck. Um, that way it kind of tucks the line and cleans up the engine bay a bit. And we did run the brake, brake lines straight down through the upper control arm. Um, they're plenty far enough away from anything that's moving there to keep them safe. And it was honestly the easiest way to keep it clean because of where our downpipe is gonna be routing later. We didn't want those lines going through that space behind the control arm. So we kept them basically right through the center. Um, the front line for the front left brakes just dropped straight down to the factory uh, mounting bracket. We're gonna have some custom stainless brake lines made to go from that point to the caliper now. And then the second line runs down through the same spot and, like I said, under the truck and up to the other side. Uh, the rear line, we went straight back to the firewall, came down the firewall and went under the body, and then basically transitioned from the body to the frame and used some cushion clamps to attach that line along the frame rail from the front all the way to the back. And in the back, on one of the factory uh, body mounts on the frame, we attached a T-block that basically will split that one rear line to two. Uh, we ran out of hard lines, so I've got to order some more to finish up those rear lines. Um, but basically, that will allow that rear line to split and one to go each side for each rear caliper. Uh, the proportioning valve itself has a knob on it to adjust the amount of rear brake force you get. So it's going to take some test driving and some hard braking to figure out exactly where that needs to be. And we'll make those adjustments once the truck is together. But for now, at least we'll have that ability to adjust it. Um, like I said earlier, the proportioning uh, portion of the factory brake system was actually part of the ABS actuator. So by deleting the ABS actuator, there would be no balance between the front and rear. So you need to install a proportioning valve when you're done, uh, whenever you delete the ABS uh, in one of these vehicles. Um, the other thing we got done today was we finished installing the clutch pedal. So um, I think I said earlier, we needed to install a Tilton master cylinder because um, the factory Nissan master cylinder was only, I believe, just under five-eighths of an inch bore, which is too small. It won't move enough fluid to fully disengage a Chevrolet slave cylinder. So by installing a Tilton, could have used a Willwood too, but the Tilton's a little more compact. And with the amount of space that we have here, um, it fit well. So we used a Tilton seven-eighths master cylinder, and then um, we'll adjust the amount of throw by installing a pedal stop if need be when we're done. Um, we're going to have to get an adapter fitting to convert to 4 a.m. at the master cylinder and then put a 4 a.m. hose from the master cylinder down to the line coming off of the Tilton slave cylinder that's inside the bell housing right now. So there's a hose coming out of the side of the bell housing with a 4 a.m. fitting on it. We'll just have to union the two together. Um, we cut the factory brake pedal. Rather than getting a brake pedal out of a manual trans vehicle, I just cut off the one side to give the space between the brake and the clutch pedal. I'm just gonna put grip tape on the pedals rather than trying to find rubber pads that fit. Uh, should work well for pedal spacing. If it becomes a problem, I'll address it later, but it'll definitely be functional for now. Um, and we're looking pretty good. One of the other things we did with the brake lines was I actually used, uh, I believe it's copper nickel brake tube, um, which has the corrosion resistance of a stainless, but the bendability and manipulability, if that's even a word, uh, of a mild steel line, but it won't rust like a mild steel line. So it's easier to work with than stainless. 
um, but has the uh, corrosion resistance of stainless. So that's why the lines look kind of a copper color, uh, but it is a very commonly used brake line material, especially in European vehicles. And in Europe, the brake line material is used pretty much exclusively over there, um, but it'll work fine here. And um, we did clean the master cylinder, clean the booster, give the booster a paint job, make it look a little better. Um, the other thing we need to address is the remote uh, reservoir for the clutch master cylinder. Um, the factory Tilton master cylinder reservoir that came with this kit, uh, it's basically too tall. If you were to mount it high enough so that you could get a nice slope in the line to feed the master cylinder, it would be too high for the hood to be able to close. Um, so I did some searching online. I actually found some uh, motorcycle master cylinders that have the port coming out the side rather than the bottom, and that'll allow me to mount it lower and still be able to get um, brake fluid into it to bleed the system. So other than that, the brake system is close to being done. Like I said, we've got to get stainless braided lines to go from the hard lines to the calipers. We have to make a couple more hard lines in the rear, but, rear, but they're really easy to make compared to the ones that we've made already. So that should be you know, pretty straightforward to get that done. And then uh, the brake system will be done. The clutch, again, just a uh, braided clutch hose to knock that out and that'll be complete. So we'll have brakes and functioning clutch. And then we can get working on some other plumbing things under the hood. We've got some exciting stuff coming in the next video. We got a new partner building this truck and I'm very excited about it. So I'll announce that on the next video. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, please share this video with your friends. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.